Hi guys, hope you are well. Please excuse my croaky throat again. I've uh, just got back from doing a workshop with some lovely ladies and of course all the yapping has given me a bit of a sore throat. So you'll have to bear with me, our apologies. Okay, right, today we are going to make a wrap bracelet. Uh, I'm going to be using real beads, real stone beads. Um, and a lady told me what these were called and I've forgotten again, my brain not working. So I've just got some quartz and these spotty um, beads uh, that I'm going to use for my bracelet. Um, but as I said to you the other day, and you've probably seen the video, you can make your own extruded square beads uh, with uh, a little hack. Uh, please go back and have a look if you haven't seen the video how to make these yourself. It's the video before this one. I'll pop a little linky poo thing up here. I'll pop one in the description for you. Uh, but just before, because I had a lot of questions from that video, I just wanted to address those before we go on and make the bracelet. So bear with me. So I... I in the next video after this one, I'm going to make a single wrap bracelet. And these are the beads I've made. These are polymer clay. And all I've done is take some, it was actually turquoise female professional. Uh, I've extruded it. I've grated some little specks. I'll show you on this one. Grated some raw silver and I've just patted it onto the beads so it's given them a really nice little speckle and smudge. And then I mixed some silver with the turquoise and I've made some little stripy beads to go with uh, my turquoise beads. And I've also cut one of my beads up to make some little tiny square beads that I may pop on my card ends. But what I just wanted to show you quickly was, um, you can trim these once they're baked. So if you do have one like this one, that has a bit of a wonky end, um, you can get a super sharp blade. These are, are like our normal tissue blades, but the short version. And you can Cut the end off and make a nice clean cut if you use a super sharp blade. So you could tidy them up after. You could cut one up to make small beads. You could make one big sausage and cut all your beads after the fact. I just wanted to show you that, guys. Um, then you um, kind of get it. What you can do with the clay ones and also I've had a couple of questions about colouring and staining buttons. Now, this is the this is just a, a metallic, like this one, metallic shanked button, a couple of pence each. I think I shared them in a haul video. And all I've done is, can you see it looks turquoisey? I have these because I do a lot of metal jewellery as well as clay jewellery. And these are Patina by Vintage, they're the, a Ranger brand, and they're um, like paints, if you like, for using on metal. So all I did was put a drop of this verdigris on, rubbed it in with my finger, waited a minute, then I wiped the excess off. So I've managed to tint that button so it'll match in with my turquoise beads but you can also do it or when you get a glaze that goes with this guys and it seals your patina in and but you can also do it with your alcohol inks you will need to varnish the button or put a little bit of resin on the button to protect the black or whatever color you are using but i'll just show you this um, just put a little spot of alcohol ink on your button. I am going to use my finger. I'm just going to rub that in and around the button 
so that it's stained it black. I'll just let that dry off while I clean my finger. Uh, yeah, I know I could put gloves on, guys, and you're always, always telling me to put gloves on, but I forget, and I don't mind getting mucky paws. So, so I'll just let that dry off a little bit. Just giving it a blow. And then what I'm going to do is, just with a bit of paper towel, I'm just going to spritz a little bit of alcohol on my paper towel. And then I'm just going to wipe over and take some of that ink off the top. So now I've got a nice metallic black stained button. So there we go. Um, and then I'll just put a bit of my varnish on that or a little bit of um, UV resin, but you can easily tint your metal buttons. You could make your own muck buttons to be fair guys. You've just got to make sure that the you know you've got a strong enough clasp on the back. But I've just tinted that one for you. So try um you know by plain buttons tint them yourselves. Okay guys so I'll just talk you through what we're gonna need to make this bracelet uh and then um we'll get cracking and I'm not going to a few of you didn't like the fact on my lariat uh, thing that I wasn't chatting. So um, I am going to chat a little bit, guys. Um, you didn't seem to like the quiet video, so I've taken that on board. Uh, so I've got my beads. Now I've got about um, 60 beads here and I, I want to do a three wrap uh, bracelet. So 60 beads should be plenty. I've got some waxed cotton cord. This is about a 2 mil cord. And I've got about 70 inches. And what you need is enough to go around your wrist one, two, three times. And bearing in mind, we're going to be tying a couple of knots. So I've got a bit extra. So that should be more than enough for a three wrap bracelet. And then beading thread wise, guys, you can use lots of different beading threads. Just have to be aware of what will fit through your bead. So I'm using this beading thread. Um, it's just a, 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 knot, a bead knotting cord uh, thread. Uh, just a, quite a cheap one, but it's very, very strong. I've had this a long time. It was a big, thick roll of it. You could use some, if you've got some of the thinner uh, knotting cord or uh, macrame cord, as some people call it, uh, you could use that. It's what will go through your bead and what is strong enough. And I did get some, there's some, uh, you know, the monofilament, oh, there it is. I also have this bead alone, Supple Max. It's a transparent um monofilament and this is a 0.3 millimeter one and it is extremely fine uh sometimes i use that but i'm going to use a black thread oh you can't see a black thread today uh, let me find something to hold i just want to show you how fine that thread is can you see now yeah so that is an extremely fine thread but it's supple enough to tie knots with you just need something that's you know supple and strong so your choice of beading materials i'm going to use my beading thread and i'm just going to use this black cord so i will just go and prep my own i've got my i have a board can you see it's like a very small macrame board but it's great for doing bracelets on um it's numbered this is a beadsmith brand, but there's lots of different ones out there, guys. It's just that stuff that your uh, Kumihimo boards are made out of, but in a big board. And I always keep a couple of pins for when I move my bracelet up. I'm going to use my board to work on as well. So I'll just go and get things prepped, um, get my beads off my strings and the such, and we'll get started. Oh, and you may want to use, if you're using a fine thread like I am, 
um, you may want to use beading needles um, it just makes the job easier you can put um, a needle on each end of your thread to help you thread through your beads entirely up to you there's lots of different ones out there I have some with just a large eye in that the um, the 0.3 filament and less will fit through and I have some of those ones um, can you see yes you can um, you know where the uh, eye closes as you're passing it through the bead these are beadalon ones um, and these are a millward brand these may be a British brand one guys but they're just beading needles as well um, and they're a 10 to 13 size um, so again you may find that easy easier if you use a beading needle it's just you know where I am with my hands I find it much easier to use a beading needle okay guys I shall go and get everything prepped and I'll see you in a minute when we make the bracelet Hi guys, just a little cut in um, because um, I just wanted to explain how to work out how many beads you need um, because obviously I didn't do that. So for each wrap around your wrist, I reckon if you go for six and a half, let me turn my board around. If you go for six and a half inches worth of beads um, per wrap around your wrist so for a two wrap you'd want um, 13 for a three wrap you would want uh, 19 and a half does that make sense so I would just get your beads and line them all up whatever beads you're using because you can make you these with around beads but I'm just grabbing these that I've just made and if you do enough beads like so so I reckon six and a half let me move them down then you can see the numbers if you do that with your beads and think six and a half inches per wrap then you will be able to work out how many beads that you have at home that you will need uh, I think the beads I've used in my bracelet are a little bit narrower so where I would normally get four to an inch um, I'm only getting um, I'm getting five to an inch so I've misjudged how many beads I needed so I just thought I would pop that in to show you guys um, that about six and a half inches worth would be one wrap around your wrist hope that makes sense guys just thought I'd pop that in just in case there was any confusion with me uh, keep calling it a three wrap when I've only ended up doing a two okay guys see you later hi guys okay I've got my board what I am going to do is flip it because of the black lines and I'm using black thread uh, I don't want you not to be able to see what I'm doing so I am going to flip my board over now what you need to do is find the middle of your cord and just get my ends together and we're just going to tie a normal uh, overhand knot if you like in the end of oh, Doris Fluff already she's just come in the window we're going to tie a nice overhand knot but we need to make sure that that loop is big enough to get our button in so I find it handy just to push the knot up against the button and then tighten it and then just make sure you want it to be snug so it'll hold the button because of course this will be our end that we slip over our button I hope that makes perfect sense to you and I've just realised I hadn't plugged my microphone in. Sorry, guys. Okay, so using my board, I can now slip that and it will hold it for me. If you haven't got um, a board, uh, you could 
tape this down to your desktop. Um, you could maybe uh, trap um, a hook using a piece of wire, trap your loop in a hook, trap your loop in a drawing pin, whatever works for you guys. But I just find it better if my cords are a little bit taut uh, and I trap them up. I'm just move that up and I trap them in the bottom so that my cords are reasonably taut right I'm just going to make sure you where I want you guys I was going to do it this way but I found it quite difficult doing that the other day so um, I'm just going to do it this way okay now I've decanted the beads I'm using just into a little pot I've got my beading needles ready and all I'm going to do is using my thread I just pull off because we can tie it off guys and it can be hidden um, I'm just going to pull off um, uh, like across my chest and hand to hand length which is about 70 inches um, if I need more I need more that's just the way I do it please of course do it your way and I'm just going to find the middle of my thread and I'm going to pass my thread under my wires uh, under my thicker under my wires under my thicker and just up near the knot Let's bring that down a bit just up near the knot I'm just going to do a single up overhand knot so just you know as you would if you were tying a normal knot I'm going to pull that really tight and then I'm going to do uh, if you've done beading before you'll know what I mean I'm going to finish it with a surgeon's knot which is exactly the same except you just pass your thread through oh it's really fiddly to show you this guys once twice just thread like you're doing a normal knot but push it through twice I've got my end there we go and it just tightens that knot nicely for you up there and then all we need to do is just prep our ends by <clears throat> passing through our beading needle and it locks in the end so I've got that one on that side and again with this end pass it through my beading needle uh, so I've got both my beading needles ready now I think I'll start with a black come on oh can't pick them up I'll just get a couple out guys and I've got some here save me making a noise in that dish okay now of course you could be using your um, your clay beads for this obviously uh, this is a commission for me so I'm using normal beads and I'm just going to push my bead up there and I'm going to just oh before I do that I'm just going to pass this thread once just to bring it down a little bit can you see what I've done there I've just looped it down a little bit and I'm just going to do the same on this one and it just stops it flapping really guys um, and I know I'm taking this really slow and really easy because there may be some people out there who've never done anything like this before and I just want to make sure that uh, everybody understands what I'm doing okay so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go under my wire again and through my bead come on oh I thought I'd have got a dodgy bead then and through my bead that way once we get a few going guys it is a bit easier 
then I'll get my other beading thread and I'm going to go under and through my bead that way. Now some people do this with a single thread, I just find it a lot easier with a double thread and then we're just going to, I need to move, sorry guys, just while I get this first one going, because it is a bit fiddly because we're getting the cord wide, I'm just going to hold that and pull my threads tight. I think I may just slacken that off a bit. There we go, okay. And as I've said, it does get easier once you've done a few beads. So we've got one in and the threads will pull pretty taut when you tug on them. But it's just getting that first one going that's a bit fiddly, burr with it. Okay, so next bead. Let's get my strings back in the bottom now that's in. So we're just gonna repeat this now guys. So, sorry, I'm still making sure I'm on. So we're gonna go under, because my thread's over at the minute, so we're gonna go under, and through the bead, and keep under that one, and pull it through. And can you see that now slides that up to the top and the same with this one uh, under through the bead oops I've caught my thread through the bead and then pull it taut and you can see now we're getting that lovely it just pulls them nice and tight now and as I've said again I'll repeat myself again guys it gets easier so all you've got to do is catch because you'll go over under over under just catch your thread push your bead push it through your bead pull it and this one is under so I'm going over through the bead and back again and that's what we're doing we're just repeating that pattern so I'll do a few and then um, I'll hold it up and show you so again as I've said once you get going it's dead easy you're just basically going twice through your bead and catching in your cord as you do it and then when you pull them tight it moves your bead up nicely okay what have we got there four five I'll do six and then I'll lift it up and show you what I've been doing so again over the cord through the bead under the cord then over the cord up through the bead and under the cord and then just pull it tight so once you've got a rhythm going it's honestly dead easy it's just that first one can be a bit fiddly because you're trying to get that gap so over the cord through the bead under the cord over the cord 
through the bead these white ones have, I think the holes just a tiny bit smaller and back out under okay so we've got six nice beads on there I'll just unpin this and lift it up and show you what we've got so can you see we've just got this nice wrap starting down the side of the thinner thread and our beads are all nicely pushed up together um, and just keep it taut and they'll be fine um, so let me just get my threads out the way okay guys what I'm now going to do is um, I'll I may speed it up or I may um, cut the bit out because you really don't want to see me doing all this do you so um, at this point I'll probably just speed it up and get to near the end and then we can have a chat about finishing it all off so I'll carry on uh, and it's literally over through over through that's all you need to do all the way down um, I am going to do a single wrap one for you guys so if you prefer to do a single wrap for your first one wait for the next video but um, I'll speed this bit up I think and I'll see you all in a minute Hi guys, I'm just going to pause here because my thread's getting quite short. So I just want to show you how I tie off and restart. Very similar to how we started. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pass. Now this will depend on the thickness of the thread you're using, to be fair. I'm hoping I can get this to pass through again. Come on. it's my needle that's getting stuck I think guys okay I'm passing it back through to bring this thread to one side and I've come over the cord not under and now I'm just gonna pull them nice and tight take them off my needles I have to be careful these needles because they're so fine that I can't sometimes see them when I've put them down okay so I've got that nice and tight just making sure that they're both pulled taut and then I'm just going to do what I did when I started I'm going to do a overhand knot just like you're tying a shoelace and make sure that's tight then I'm going to do a surgeon's knot which is just passing it through twice it just locks your knot if that makes sense now some people will pass these thread ends th back through uh, to make sure it's doubly um, strong but I'm more than happy now to snip these ends off very close and what I do is get, you can use whatever you want, a dab of super glue. I use this hypo cement um, and I just put a tiny dot of hypo cement on the knot so I just know that that knot will oh can't get me pinned back in the end just so that I know that that knot uh, won't come undone or fray get in I can't get me pinned back in me glue got it um, and I just let that dry uh, and, and what I will do is just go in and snip those ends a little bit shorter you could just leave them guys and just glue your knot but a tiny drop of hypo cement Doris a tiny drop of hypo cement or jeweler's glue 
on your knot make sure you don't stick it to your board I've done that before and then we can get some more thread then I'm going to do it on this side so that it's even just kind of find the middle sorry guys Doris wants to go out but what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to make a loop I think it's called a half hitch and I'm going to pass my threads through the loop then I know that that has got no chance of coming undone and I'll get my next bead pop it there get my needles back on the end of my thread oh that glue really stinks needle back on the threads thread back on the needles even guys okay then I'm gonna Doris make your mind up come on she wants to go back out I think I'm just gonna pass this through and under to get my thread on the other side again I'm just gonna pull that up nice and taut and then I will pass start again doing my over under um, just make sure that knot's tight so through the bead under the thread then other needle again guys if you're using a thicker thread and a smaller eye you may not get too many passes through your beads but you should be okay if you're using a similar size like a 0.3 or less you should be fine okay so that's through and I'm just gonna make sure it's tucked up there and then pull that taut and that's locked that in there nice and bonny and we can just now repeat I um, hope that made sense um, you can always replay it guys um, but that's how you change your thread and if I, I prefer to do a shorter thread and change my thread than have meters and meters and meters of thread um, because it's really hard work when you're pulling it taut much easier to handle if you've only got a small amount of thread and plus god forbid that came undone you don't lose all your beads do you so anyway that's what i do i shall carry on at speedy time guys see you when i'm in okay guys I'm close to finishing now as you can see my thread is extremely short so what I'm going to do is bring this longer thread to this side and I'll bring that sorry over and I've got a thread either side I'll just take my beading needles off let me just pop them in that pot then I don't lose them there we go and again guys just do a single knot oh come on and pull it tight and then I'm just going to go and do a surgeon's knot which is around loop twice come on oh the ends are so short that I'm struggling I 
around twice. Okay, pull that taut. Tiny dab of glue on, which I'll do in a minute. And I may have slightly misjudged the amount of beads I needed, guys. So let's see. This may be a two wrap bracelet. Yeah, we're going to end up with a two wrap for this one, guys. Um, maybe I used thicker beads last time. Uh, but I'll just turn this into a two wrap. Uh, it doesn't really make much difference. You know, you'd just go around again, wouldn't you? I suppose I could add some more beads just to bring it around to there. We'll see. I'm just going to go and have a minute and have a break. Make sure they're all okay. I could space them out a bit, I suppose. Yeah, I'll just make sure these are all nicely sat and they've got enough room so that they don't bunch because that can happen a little bit sometimes, guys just stretch them out it works a treat okay uh, I'll be back in a sec and we'll finish this end off see you when I'm in okay guys apologies I've dug out a few more beads what I should have done is line my beads up and double checked so we're going to do a two wrap I will um, voice over the beginning of this video so nobody gets confused so I've got if I lie my beads out like this on my desk I've got 14 inches worth of beads and I'm about three inches short so I've just dug some more beads out this is just a run through for me guys just to see what colors I like to go together uh, so I will like, probably undo this and redo it um, for my commissions um, so you know not to worry um, so if you just say seven inches worth of beads for each wrap you should be fine and I will alter the beginning of the video just so you know right guys I'm going to quickly do these and I'll come back to you um, when I've done them um, and then we'll finish the bracelet off so I shall see you in a more okay guys I'm at the end now this is my last bead so I'm going to just pass my thread through I'm not going under I'm just uh, passing the thread through each side oh please go through it doesn't want to oh I've done it just so that it kind of locks that bead into place now there's a couple of ways you can finish this um, you could take that thread to that side tie them off as we do when we're changing thread but what I like to do is just get my cord pinched bring my threads down and wrap oh sorry one one way and one the other way I hope this is making sense so I've just brought my threads down the cord and brought them to the opposite side of the cord like so and then I'm just going to tie it a single overhanded knot just to get that where I want it like so and then I'm just going to wrap it around one more time and then tie a surgeon's knot and then when I tie my knot in my cord it will hide the gubbins of the surgeon's knot I do hope that makes sense so one two for my surgeon's knot pull it tight 
again you can put a daub of glue on that I am just going to tie that one more knot just to finish it off there we go put a dab of glue on there guys then cut your ends of course you need to let your glue dry so that's my cord finished and then let's take my pins out so those are beautiful wrapped twice wrapped bracelet oh one of my beads is going to be hinky let's straighten it up there we go and all we're going to do here is we're going to just do a normal overhand knot. Let's pass that through. And this knot will hide your gubbins of where you've tied your thread off. So it's an extra security. Now, if you've got a huge hole in your uh, end you can put both your threads through I haven't so I'm just going to pass one of my thick cords through oh I'm just going to have to melt that end because it's fraying a little bit even though it's cotton cord it warms the wax up and stiffens it guys let's just pass my button through come on it doesn't want to go but I shall oh that's tough oh it's through I've done it okay so I've got my little button on there then I'm going to tie another knot just move that along like so just going to make sure that's nice and tight and neat now you can if you want add a couple of beads on now my beads will not fit through that thread it's a very narrow hole I could put a couple of metal beads on and tie a knot but what I'm going to do is just for each one just to make it nice and neat is I'm just going to tie a little tight knot in the end of each of these and then trim my cord at the other side of that knot but like I say you could thread a nice you know a nice matching bead on if you so wished just adds that bit of something make sure that's lovely and tight and then I'm just going to trim that like so so there it is guys we've got a knot there our shanked button another knot and I've just put little knots on the ends just uh, to finish the cord end off and then all we need to do is bring that around pop oh pop our cord trust me to be all fingers and thumbs today pop our cord loop over our button which is not the best thing to do one handed there we go and there's our lovely easy peasy wrap bracelet uh, as I've said to you before guys you can do this in as many wraps as you wish um, with different sizes of beads I'm gonna make a single wrap with these turquoise clay beads in the next video but there you go really really simple uh, once you've got you know the hang of the knots and the stuff and you've counted that your beads are okay um, in fact I may put another little knot in that and just so that my button stays a bit further up there so it's a bit tighter but you can adjust as necessary guys I just wanted to show you the basics but there we go a nice little wrap bracelet hope you enjoyed that guys I really do enjoy making these um, I just need to remember how many beads I need um, 
which was the purpose of this to be fair this run through but there you go nice little wrap bead bracelet and I shall see you all in the next video. See you later guys. Bye.